All right. So, you know, others, if you have any questions, you can put them in chat. So in the meantime, the second question that I got was, you know, this is for 11 year old boy. And the question is, my son was bullied in school. So the son is 11 year old. And we got them transferred to another school. He's still scared. What can I do? Mm. You know, children also go through traumatic times, just like we do. You know, there are certain memories that we have as adults. Um, some are positive and some are negative. That are like impressions that we, that are impressions, in fact, that we carry into adulthood. And that determine our outlook. For example, a child may have had the experience of almost drowning when they were very small. They may not even remember that they had that experience, but they're afraid of water after that. So things like this may happen. Here, we have a very beautiful tool that we give children in the Art Excel and Yes program, and that tool is Children's Sudarshan Kriya. And it's a breathing meditation, and the effects of this are so powerful. Research has been done on returning vets from Afghanistan, the Middle East, and of course, dealing with PTSD and all the trauma of what they faced. And what they found is when they researched the adults and the adult version of this practice was that it was extremely useful, extremely beneficial for alleviating stress, um, not just then, for, but for a continued period of time, anxiety and PTSD, fear, trauma, all those things that are related to PTSD. And it was so effective. Now imagine having that freedom. You know, as situations and events come up in life, you're also, you also have the skills through your breathing meditation to let go of them. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, who is the founder of this program, once said that if every child in America does the Art Excel course, violence in America would end. And when a child has not released that trauma, even though they've been victimized in one instance, they may feel justified in bullying in another instance. So it's imperative that we give the tool, tools to the children to help them deal with this day-to-day -day trauma that they have faced and these episodes that happen in their life. And Art Excel is a very, very valuable practice for this. So I would highly recommend that, Arpit. All right, yeah, that helps. And, you know, I would say anybody who wants to ask a question, please also mention the age of your child. That will help, you know, Mona in answering the question, right? So the next question I have is, you know, how to deal with a child who wants to play video game most of the time and when asked to limit it, throws tantrums and it's nine year old. But I think the parents are experts on this. You know how much time you should give to a child for video games. One thing that I just want to point out, um, I know a lot is coming up about the effects of video games. But one more thing that we don't uh, pay attention to perhaps is that the number of impressions that they pick up until age eight, the mind is so supple and it picks up impressions very quickly. And so till that point, we should really, really limit the television that they watch at least until age eight. Because all of these impressions, and we see like when we're watching TV, within a 30 second period, we're bombarded with so many different impressions that get um, that enter the mind. So we really want to be mindful of that. And then the more they play video games, you know, they also lose touch with reality between what is real and what is unreal. In a video game, somebody is demolished and then they spring back up to life. But in life, that doesn't happen. So it's imperative that we limit the games. And initially, it may be difficult because they're not used to having that 
restriction put upon them by you. But if you don't do it at this age, at age nine, when you still have such a huge say over their life and what they can and cannot do, then later it becomes very difficult. So this is definitely the right time to bring that discipline, to exercise the parental authority at this time. Right. You know, actually today only I was talking to my daughter and you know, we were talking about being a smarter in the class. So I asked her, I'm like, you know, when you watch TV and currently she's watching like just for laugh gags videos, I'm like, do you think that makes you smarter? This is like, no. I, I didn't follow Arpit. What was the conversation with her? So, you know, I think me and her were talking about her, what she did in the class today. And she's like, you know, today I got this very good score in this game. Like it's like educational game. Oh, okay. So my teacher thought, you know, I'm smarter in my class. Mm. So then I asked like, how can you be smarter every day? Just watching this YouTube videos makes you smarter. And she's like, no. So I'm like, okay, then maybe we should not watch that. You know, it's interesting. And these games are so addictive. So I was playing one last week. And it was a word game. And it was interesting because I was observing myself as I'm playing this. And of course, I did many rounds of this game because the moment you clear one hurdle, then the next game automatically starts. And you think, oh, it's just going to take a few more minutes. Let me finish this also. And then your numbers keep racking up, right? And it was interesting because you get this false feeling of some accomplishment, which is no real accomplishment at all. In fact, it's the opposite of accomplishment because you're wasting time that you could be better spent doing something else. But I was thinking like, these guys are so clever, how they've studied how the human mind works and are able to manipulate us so easily. And without awareness, we just go on and on and on playing something which gives us no joy really as we're doing it and definitely no long-term joy or benefit afterwards as well. So it's fascinating how that happens. Now, the real skill in life, I would say, is also developing soft skills. You know, as parents, particularly often Asian parents, you know, all of us, we put so much emphasis on education, isn't it? Because we know the value of education. But we also need to put emphasis on soft skills, on human development, so that they feel comfortable in different situations. They feel at ease with different people. And that really helps them move forward in life. In fact, at a certain point, employers have told me that technical skill will only carry somebody so far. And at a certain point, if they don't have those soft skills, then they kind of peak out in their profession. But one who has developed those soft skills, even if that technical expertise is a little bit lacking, they're the ones who get promoted for the next level of management, directorship, et cetera because they understand people and how to be with people. And part of what our program does, so it's got three main components. One is this human values component. The second is the breathing exercises, the meditation practices, and the third is physical exercise. that they're learning anything and yet as I shared in that example um, that story that I shared with you in the beginning so much is just absorbed within them now as they're doing all of this there's so much interaction with other people and other people within the class so those skills start developing a question has just come up from Rekha does Art Excel teach soft skills yes those soft skills get developed in the classroom because you're interacting with other people you're playing games you're developing leadership teamwork collaboration all those skills are coming up as part of class even this ability right in the beginning of how to make a new friend so we were talking about human values one of the first keys what we call the keys to success success 
is to make a new friend every day. And it may seem something like very simple. But as children get older, not everybody is able to be comfortable with different people. We've seen this. So right away, they're actually paired with a buddy that they don't know in class. And they're asked to get to know that person. And we actually review, like, what are some of the things you can ask them? So they regain that skill of how to make new friends. And then we encourage them throughout the class to keep meeting new people and keep extending their hand. Now, it seems like a very simple thing, right? Make a new friend every day. But now carry that skill into adulthood. Does it happen when you're at work that certain people irritate you? At the office, you can nod. Yes? Right. So certain people irritate you, get on your nerves, and you're just like, what's wrong with these people? But then if you have that skill of making new friends and meeting new people throughout your life, what you develop is <clears throat> what you develop is skill. You learn how to be with different types of people. You learn how to be in different situations, from how to deal with people with different perspectives and how to incorporate those perspectives, how to understand them. You get exposed to so much. And because you're exposed to so many ways of thinking and being and doing, your buttons don't get pushed so quickly. So such a simple thing becomes this lifelong skill for everlasting success. Thank you. But must ask you a question. How to help my kid understand and control their emotions? He's 13. Padma, first of all, at that age, I think um, the biggest test is how much can we control our emotions? Because they are constantly pushing our buttons. You know, kids are experts at this, right? Have you noticed? They know exactly what to do to push our buttons, to irritate mom and to, or dad and get a particular reaction out of them. They have PhDs in this. They've been observing you from the time they're born. And, you know, honestly, they could write a PhD thesis like that about how to push the buttons of each member of the family. And at that age, you know, they're testing the waters of how much they can get away with. So first and foremost, the skill at age 13 is for us to respond rather than react to have a greater control over our own emotions. One thing is for sure that kids learn far more from our presence, from our behavior, than by what we tell them to do. Have you noticed this? That you'll tell your kids something to do, but then the moment you do the opposite of that, they point that out to you. Oh, but you told us to do this and you're not doing it. And it's a very human thing from our side, right? We can't be perfect but they're very quick to catch on. So I would strongly encourage the parents also to do the Art of Living program, to do your practices, so that you can be more centered and have that skill in action. And also, you know, when they're so reactive, because this is the age, hormones are going crazy, emotions are going crazy. This is a very volatile period in their lives, the teenage years. The more centered we can be, we can diffuse that situation. Whereas when they come at us, like with irritability and anger and agitation, and if we react the same way, then the situation just goes out of control in the household. But you can diffuse it right then and there with your centeredness. My kids started crying just at the right time. 602 PST. Okay, I think someone's just sharing a comment. I have twins aged 16 months. They don't eat unless their cartoons are on. I feel this is not so good always. How can this be stopped? Stop it now. Please stop it now. At this age, until age eight, they should not be exposed to television. So just stop it. Um, and at this point, they're extremely malleable. In fact, what's very beneficial when you're feeding them is to make eye contact with them. This is a wonderful time for the parents to bond with the child and to really, you know, my mother always 
said how food is a vehicle from which we can convey our love, right? I think many mothers, you all must have mothers and grandmothers who also feel that way. And I know we can taste that love in their food. But of course, how can we taste that love if our eyes are on the television? So from now on, just start training them, and if need be, yourselves as well, that when we're eating, we're only eating. TV is off, we're not looking at our phones. Of course, the 16-month-old is not, but this is a practice for you and the older kids. Food time is family time. And when you're feeding them, now I'm talking about the 16-month-olds, make eye contact. This is such a moment for you to just bond with the babies, with so much love, and just enjoy, enjoy their antics as they're eating. So do enjoy that. And by the way, good luck. You have two 16-month-olds who will grow up to be two 16-toddlers, I mean, two toddlers and teenagers and everything else. So all our best to you. (laughs) How can can I help kids motivate them to practice their art excel and intuition process practices? So, you know, I believe that parents are the best. um, You know your children better than anyone else. And you know, actually, you already know what to do to get them to do something. You've been doing it all their lives from the child they were little time they were you know 16 month old babies to later on you've known how to push their buttons to make them do what you want them to do it gets a little harder as they keep growing up so parents have used different things one is some external motivation can work for example promising them something that they have their eye on instead of just giving it to them telling them Okay, if you do your practices for one year or nine months, whatever it is that you feel is an appropriate time according to their age, every single day without a break, then I'll take you to Disney World. I'll take you here or I'll give you this. That that can work. If they feel like they're going to lose something, that can also work. And then, you know, when they do it, encouraging them, like that positive reinforcement also works. You know, instead of you didn't do this, you didn't do this, when they actually do something to appreciate that, that also reinforces that in their mind. Got it? My children are 8 and 11, and they enjoy episodes and YouTube. And I see them. Actually, I just want to answer one more question about that. Um, Should you force the kids to do their practices? I'll leave that up to you. I would say inspire the kids to do their practices. One thing I've seen is that those households in which the parents are doing their practice, those are the ones in which the kids are keeping up with their practice because it becomes part of the culture of the house. And it's much harder for kids to get into their practice if they don't see the parents doing it. So that is one thing. And then, you know, I'll leave it up to you to decide. But the fact of the matter is we we know that these practices are beneficial. So just as we enforce, you know, healthy eating habits, um, limited television time, screen time, etc., you can enforce this also. Who says you cannot? You find the skillful way to do it. You already have the skills. You just... And do it in the right way for your child. Okay. How do I teach my child, daughter to understand and control her emotions? She's four years old. She's four years old. You be centered and you control your emotions. That's good enough. The child will pick up on that. You know, there's a big difference between being four and 34. Are you always in control of your emotions? No, no. How can we expect a four-year-old to be in control? This is where we become parents and allow them to be children. You know, when they're babies, it's very good to let them cry. I know pediatricians also say this, 
But Guruji said something, something very interesting, Shri He said that emotions are... <laughs> Emotions are often, um, emotions are in the lung area. And by allowing them to cry, it releases those impressions, those built up emotions, even from the past that they may be carrying. When I say the past, you know, like past lifetimes uh, included. And it also opens up their lung capacity. So allowing them to cry for a couple minutes when they're babies is very beneficial. Have you seen that when they're small kids, like toddlers, babies, you know, they just, um, the word that's coming to me is a Hindi word, you know, tun tun, um, which I think even in English kind of translates, like they just kind of are irritable. Like you can't, um, you can't make them content. You, you can't figure out why they're crying, so you give them a bottle. They don't want the bottle. You change the diaper. You try to put them to sleep. You pat their heads. Nothing's working. You give them some toy. They throw the toy, and they keep crying. They keep crying. It's because they want to cry. They're looking for an excuse to cry, so let them cry. Let them cry for a few minutes and release those impressions, those emotions, so that they can feel that release. My children are 8 and 11, and they enjoy episodes and YouTube, and I see them very happy that time. Should I say no, or should I leave it to their interest? My elder knows the importance of grades and studies. You know, of course they'll be interested in these YouTube episodes and all of that, because they're meant to be entertaining. Why don't you give them other things to do? Read books to them. Take them outdoors take them to the park, go out in nature. This is not the age for them to just watch television. It makes them static. It also decreases, do you know that watching television um, decreases brain cells? Have you noticed this? Have you, okay, let's say you're watching Netflix or you're watching a three hour Indian movie. You watch the whole movie, do you feel kind of dull afterwards? Or Netflix is such a wonderful example because the next show comes on immediately, right? If you're watching a series. And that's why they say um, binging on Netflix. So this is just an example for you to experience how dull the mind becomes. Instead, encourage them to do creative things. Let them write their own stories. Let them play games. Let them in be inventive. Those creative talents don't come up when all the storytelling is done for you. So please, um, it takes more effort from our side, but I think our children are worth that investment of time and energy from our side so that they can be, be the best, sharpest, most loving, well-adjusted human beings that they can. Isn't it? How to enforce and stick to rules to a kid who does not listen. Age of the child is four and a half. So one thing is, you know, see what rules you're enforcing at that age, which are reasonable for that uh, age and which are not. You can't expect a four-year-old to have an understanding of a seven-year-old. But they do have considerable understanding. So just uh, be a little bit age specific and age sensitive when guiding your child. YouTube addiction is a big problem for my 11 year old daughter. No matter what I say or do, she's unable to control the temptation. Yeah, you need to figure out ways to handle this. So whether it's for sure limiting screen time and then also limiting access that she has to these devices. You know, I actually have a nephew who was given, um, the grandparents are so proud. Oh, he plays Farmville. You know, he knows computers so well. He knows more than we do. So one day I took him off the computer and I said, come, let's play a card game. So this is a card game, a very simple one. It's called War, W-A-R, and not even something a little bit more complicated or sophisticated like Rami, but just War. It's very simple. 
I said, come, let's you and I play this together. The kid had no idea why one person was winning or the other person was losing. It is such a simple game. So they may develop certain skills or something we think because we're giving them all that screen time. But, and this kid, so I've now seen him grow up. He's now in middle school. His learning time is just a little bit slower. So please, you know, only you can enforce this. And I strongly encourage you to, you, to come, with, with, come up with other activities. Take them to the library, get them books, have them write their own stories, have them illustrate, give them paper, have them draw. And you can say, oh, my kids don't want to do this. Well, this is the age that you can still influence and change the direction in which they're moving. Later on, it becomes harder and harder because those impressions and those habits become more ingrained. So this is the perfect time to shift that. Is it okay to give them bucks for doing some extra learning? <laughs> so, you know, I was completely opposed to this. One woman um, offered her kids $100. I guess back when $100 meant something to children. So she, gave, she said, if you be vegetarian for one year, I'll give you $100. The kids became permanent vegetarians in three months. And even though I protested, it's a family member, I said, you shouldn't do this. This is wrong, this, that. Well, I was proven wrong. So you see what works best for your kid. Um, definitely, you know, one thing that Guruji shares is not to create this sense of ownership around money for kids. So to keep a bowl with money inside and say, okay, whatever you need, you can take it from this bowl. Um, and then whatever's left after you have bought what you want, put it back in this bowl. Then this feeling of this is shared, this is part of something for the whole family comes into them rather than the sense of this is your money, you keep it. And then that selfishness comes, that greed starts coming. <clears throat> then what happens later is when they're adults and we're much older then it gets turned around on us. Why should I give this to my parents? That's my money. Why should I spend on other people? And other people could even be their own family, like their brothers and sisters. This is my money. So this is something we don't want to encourage. And the way to offset that is to have a communal bowl in which they can remove money and put it back. My parents actually had this as well. Um, I don't know if they did it consciously or unconsciously, but um, I remember as a child, I would fight with them. When I first came to this country, we heard everyone was getting allowances. So for a short period, they started giving allowances, though neither of us remembered. Neither I remembered to collect it, nor they remembered to give it. But with the little that I had, because that sense of ownership was really not inculcated, uh, I remember fighting with my parents, my mom, let me pay, let me pay. And other parents just looking at us in the store like, what a strange child. So he definitely does not encourage giving, um, giving pocket money and things like that, but having that communal bowl. Great. The response came back that I like this idea. Probably I will follow this because I'm also against giving allowances. Good. So we've been talking now for, uh, for about, uh, about 35 minutes. Shall we shift and do a meditation? Maybe just one last question I'll answer, which has just come in. And then would you like to meditate? Yes. Okay. Will letting the children sleep next to us prevent them from being independent when they grow up? What is the best age for the child to sleep by themselves? This is such a good question. So as a child, I was absolutely horrified when some family friends of ours brought their baby home from the hospital I must have been about seven or about eight years old. And the child was kept in a separate room. I said, how could you do this? Like to me, it was just horrifying that this crib was in a separate room by itself. And they said, no, we want to teach them independence. And it just felt so wrong to me because as a child, I had complete access 
to going into my pet parents' bedroom and sleeping with, the, with them whenever I wanted. And then years later, I heard Guruji talk about this. And he said that until age three or four, five, give them full access. Let them come into your room whenever they wish. And for sure, when they're newborn babies, you know, because they've been experiencing feeling the mother's heartbeat for so long, that it's very comforting for them to continue experiencing your heartbeat. So keeping them next to you when you're sleeping, they're sleeping, having them like this when they're, we, we all do this, right? When they're babies, that's very important. And he actually said that having this access until the age of three, four, five, it actually gives them a sense of security in the world. And when they don't have it, they feel insecure. So it's interesting. So when we make them, we think we're giving them independence and force them to do something that's not comfortable at that age, it's actually creating insecurity rather than security. And a secure child, of course, is an independent child. My nine-year-old likes to have fun all the time. How to explain to him that it's important to balance fun with doing his tasks and some small chores. At that age, they should definitely be doing chores. I have seen even very small children rinse their plate. This mother had kept a step stool next to the, these kids were four, five, six. There were like four of them. There was a step stool next to the sink. They would rinse their plate and put it in the dishwasher. And I was stunned. This is amazing. So for sure, they need to have, uh, you should have expectations for them that they do certain chores and they should know that also. So you can say, you know, you have, um, when you come home from school, you rest, you relax, you do some fun, uh, fun activities because they need a break also. They need to unwind, right? When they come home, we can't just make them do their homework right away. They need some downtime. So you have that, you fix how long that period is. Then uh, you can, do, you do your homework. Then after homework, you do these chores, empty the dishwasher, set the table, whatever it might be. Take out the trash, etc. Whatever it might be, you have that expectation for him. And so that they know on a daily basis, he has to do something to help the family out. And believe me, his wife will be so grateful to you. Especially for boys, I think it's very important that we train them on all this stuff so that they become sensitive and um, more capable to handle themselves. Because almost everyone at some point lives independently nowadays, right? They don't go directly from the parents' home into marriage. There's some period of time in which they're on their own. And this is also preparing them for that. Okay. Shall we meditate now? Yes. Every time I say meditate, somebody sends a question. No. Uh, so again, with the YouTube video as unwinding this after school, find something else to do. Um, have a habit of, you know, picking out library books, the two of you together. Go outside. You, you are the one who has in, allowed this habit to happen, and you're the one who can stop this habit. There will be some resistance for some period of time, but only you can change that. Is it okay to enroll the kids in multiple activities like piano, dance, sports, etc.? I feel it's better if they're busy in these activities rather than having too much free time because when, that's when they start saying we're bored and ask for TV time. You know, that's because, yes, it's good to enroll them in activities that develop their skills and allow them to discover more aspects of themselves but they also need to be given free time so that the imagination can develop. So when they come at you, I'm bored, ask them to do something like write me a story. Why don't we draw pictures together? Why don't we do this? And again, you know, as parents, it's, you're such the role model for them. And they see what you do. If they see that mom and dad spend their downtime watching TV, of course, they're going to join you and do that with you. But if they see that mom and dad read a book in their downtime, then that's the habit that they start picking up. 
So it's it's such a conscientious act to become a parent. And the more aware we are, the more conscientious we are, the more they naturally imbibe those habits and skills from us as well. So it may take a little bit more work to change the routine, but we must. And downtime is important so that creativity can develop. Their imagination has room to spring up and do things. Now meditation. So we'll do a short meditation. Let's close our eyes. Let's take a long breath in. And let go. Let's take another long breath in. And let go. Let's become aware of the sounds in the environment. Let us accept all the sounds in the environment. Now we're in harmony with the environment. Let's take a deep breath in and let go. Let's become aware of our physical body. This body is a beautiful gift given to us with so much love by nature, by the divine. Let us love and honor this body that we've been given. Let's become aware of our feet, our knees, thighs, hips, abdomen, stomach, chest, shoulders, right arm, <clears throat> left arm, throat, face, and head. Let's become aware of the whole body. 
the whole body. Let's take a deep breath in. And let go. Let's become aware of our thoughts. Good thoughts or bad thoughts, however they may be, just let them be. No need to resist your thoughts. Allow them to be there. Let's take a deep breath in and let go. Now we're in harmony with our thoughts. Let us become aware of our emotions, pleasant or unpleasant, just let them be. You are peace, you are love, you are joy. Let us come back to that childlike innocent nature inside that is pure love, pure joy, pure innocence. Let's take a deep breath in and let go. Let us become aware of our emotions. our thoughts, the physical body, and the sounds in the environment. Again, let's take a deep breath in. 
and let go. And slowly and gradually, let us gently open our eyes. It was good. It's wonderful. So thank you so much all for attending. Arpit, did you want to sh share anything else? Yes. So, you know, we mentioned the Art Excel program multiple times. So, you know, Art Excel program is mainly for the kids with in the age group of 8 to 13 years old. You know, and we have some Art Excel programs lined up across the country. So, I'll share my screen. Yes, So we have an art action program in Brantford or Nashville. It's scheduled from next Friday, which is March 8th. And it's four-day program, three hours each. So March 8 to 11. You know, and these are the URLs. One is tiny.cc slash art excel Nashville. Or you can reach out to me as well. My phone number is 615. Seven zero five seven seven one three. You know our next art excel program is in Folsom, California. Radhika is hosting it. It's from April eighteen to twenty one. And you know, just like art excel, you know, we also have yes program. So the yes program is for fourteen to seventeen year olds, and that is also hosted in Folsom. Same dates, April 18 to 21. And if you need more details, you can contact Radhika. Her number is 510-396-3880. Our next program is in Matwa, New Jersey. And I believe it's from April 11 to 14. And if you need more details, you know, you can reach out to Mamta Bajaj. Mamta, you want to add anything else? Here? Right. So, thank you, Muradidi, for our wonderful session. You know, we really enjoyed it. And you know, the program in Nashville, Muradidi herself is coming next week to Nashville to you know teach this program. So, I would highly recommend you know sending your kids for that. And if you have any questions, you know, you can always reach out to me. Right. Namaste. Thanks for spending time with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank right. you all for attending. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to end this. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.